Act two, a sumptuously appointed bedchamber. In a recess at the back of the stage in a large bed raised on a dais, the main door in and out is upstage right. Another door to the dressing room is downstage left. And a third at the back of the stage leads to the maid's quarters. Opposite this door is a window. Story, down to the very last detail. I haven't held anything back, madame. You mean, Suzanne, that he seriously tried to seduce you? Oh, no, his lordship wouldn't go to all that bother for a servant. He tried to buy me. And the page was there the whole time? In the sense that he was hiding behind the large armchair, yes. He came to ask me to ask you to intervene on his behalf. But why didn't he just come straight to me? Do you imagine I would have said no, Suzanne? That's what I said, but he was so upset at the thought of going away and especially of leaving you, madame. Oh, Suzette, she is as noble as she is fair, but she's a bit forbidding. Is that really how I seem, Suzanne? I've always tried to be kind to him. Then he saw your ribbon, which I had in my hand, and he grabbed it. My ribbon? Oh, <laughs> like a child. I tried to get it back from him, madame, but he fought like a lion. His eyes blazed. If you want it back, it'll be over my dead body, he said as loud as he could in that melting, piping voice of his. And then, Suzanne? Well, madame, how does anyone stop a little devil like him? One minute it was respect for my godmother, the next, if I only dared, and because he didn't even dare kiss the hem of your dress, he tried to kiss me instead. Let, oh, let's say no more of this foolishness. <sighs> so... Suzanne, my dear, what did my husband say to you? That if I wouldn't cooperate, he'd give Marceline his full backing. He doesn't love me anymore. Why is he so jealous then? Oh, well, he's like all husbands, my dear. Simple pride. Oh, I loved him too much. I bored him with my affection, wearied him with my love. Those are the only wrongs I have done him. But I won't allow your honesty in telling me this to harm your future. You shall marry Figaro. Only he can help us ensure that you do. Is he coming? As soon as he sees the hunt off. Open the garden window a little. It's so hot. And That's because your ladyship has grown heated talking and walking like that. If he weren't so determined to avoid me. Men have a great deal to answer for. Oh, there goes his lordship riding out through the far garden with Pedrillo and two, three, four hounds. We've got plenty of time. He sits down. Was that a knock at the door, Suzanne? My Figaro, it's my Figaro. Do come in, my sweet. Madame is desperate to talk to you. And you are, Suzanne, my pet. There's no reason to despair, your ladyship. Look, what's the problem? It's nothing. His lordship takes a fancy to this young woman here, present, and wants her as his mistress. It's perfectly natural. Natural? So he gives me the job of carrying his dispatches and adds Suzette to his embassy staff. Now, that's a smart move. Have you finished? And because Suzanne, my fiancé, won't accept the honor, he decides to take Marceline's side. Again, what could be simpler? You get even with those who upset your plans by spoiling theirs. Everybody does it, and we're going to do it too. There. I think that sums it up. Oh, Figaro, how can you be so offhand about his intentions, which threaten the happiness of all of us? Who says I'm offhand? Instead of taking our fears seriously. I'm serious enough to be doing something about them. Now, if we are to proceed methodically as his lordship, first, we reduce his enthusiasm for acquiring what belongs to us by making him unsure of his grip on what belongs to him. Good idea, but how? It's already done, your ladyship. A wicked rumor has been spread about you. About me? Are you mad? No, but he will be. A man as jealous as he is. That's all to the good. If you want to get the better of people like him, you only have to needle them slightly, as you ladies know only too well. Then, when you've made them suitably furious, 
it only takes some light steering and you can point them in any direction you choose. Straight into Guadalquivir if that's what you want. I've arranged for an unsigned letter to be delivered by Basile. It warns his lordship that tonight, during the celebrations, a man will try to approach you. But you can't play with the truth like this when a woman's good name is involved. There are I've been so bold for fear my story turned out to be the truth. You mean I should be grateful? But wouldn't you agree that it's rather amusing to think that we're filling up his day for him so that he spends time prowling around thinking the worst of his wife, which he would otherwise have passed agreeably with mine? Already he's in two minds. Should he run after this woman or keep an eye on that one? He doesn't know which way to turn. Look, there he goes, across the fields, chasing an exhausted hare. The time for our wedding is approaching fast. He'll have done nothing to prevent it, and he won't have the nerve to object if your ladyship's there. True, but Marceline, who's nobody's fool, will. Pish, I'm not worried about her. You send word to his lordship that you will be in the garden just as it's getting dark. Do you think it'll work? Damn it all, listen. People who won't try to make something out of nothing, achieve nothing, and are good for nothing. That's my motto. Sounds too clever by half. Just like this plan. You're not seriously intending to let her go. Of course not. I shall dress someone else in Suzanne's clothes. Then when we catch the Count red-handed, he won't be able to talk his way out of it. Who'll wear my clothes? Cherubine. <laughs> but he's gone. Not as far as I'm concerned. Will you allow me to get on with it? You can always count on figure when there's a plot afoot. Two plots, three, four at a time, as involved and tangled as you... They say it's not an easy thing to be. Take, grab, demand. That's the secret of it in three words. He exudes such confidence that some of it's wearing off on me. That's what I was hoping for. You were saying? That while his lordship is out, I will send Carol Bean here. Do his hair and dress him up. I'll keep him out of harm's way and tell him what he has to do. Then his lordship will have to dance to our tune. <laughs> Heaven, Suzanne. Oh, I look a fright. And with that young man do it any more? Your ladyship's not intending to go easy on him. <laughs> go easy? <laughs> I shall give him a good scolding, you'll see. Let's make him sing that song he wrote. No, but really, my hair is such a mess. All it needs is for me to put those two curls back where they belong, and then you can scold away. What were you saying, Suzanne? Do come in, Captain. Madame is at home. I hate being called Captain. It reminds me that I have to leave this house, and a godmother who is so, so kind. And so beautiful. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Such a nice young man. And those long, tuning eyelashes. Come on, my fine-feathered bluebird, sing the song for his ladyship. And, and who did you say it was by? Aha, the guilty party blushes. It's written all over his face. Am I not allowed to admire? I'll tell everything, you little worm. All right, all right. <laughs> Can you sing? Oh, your ladyship, I'm so nervous that I'm shaking. Get away with you. The minute Madame wants to hear your song, you come over all modest like a real author. Come along, I'll accompany you. Oh, take my guitar. The countess, who is seated, holds the paper and follows the words. Positioned behind her chair, Suzanne plays the introduction, reading the music over the countess's shoulder. Cherubine stands facing them, head lowered. Until beside a fountain's freshness, oh, how my heart doth ache with sadness. Memories of my godmother surface, and I feel my tears flow free. I felt my tears flow free, filling me with des despondency. I carved upon a cypress, oh, how my heart doth ache with sadness. Her name, but I remained anonymous. The king passed by for all to see. The king passed by and all did see, his barons, knights, and splendid panoply. Then. Up spake, the, up spake the highness. Oh, how doth my heart ache with sadness. Page, wherefore thou this distress? Why do you weep so grievously? Why do you weep so grievously? Fear not, but speak and tell me. I mourn the loss, your graciousness. Oh, how my heart doth ache with sadness. Of my godmother's gentleness, a lady I loved most tenderly. Oh, 
very simple, very charming, and in fact, rather touching. He's a young man who can be very touching. Now then, Captain, I suppose you've been informed that to add zest to this evening's jollity, we needed to know in advance if one of my dresses will fit you. Oh, I'm afraid it won't. He's the same height as me. Let's start by having that cloak off. Oh, what if someone comes in? We're not doing anything wrong, are we? I'll lock the door. But first I want to see what can be done about his hair. Um, on my dressing table, the bonnet with the turned down brim. The Count won't know you're still in the castle until just before the start of the ball. Afterwards, we'll explain that we had the idea because of the time it would take to get your commission signed and sealed. That's no good. I've got it here. His lordship gave it to Basil to give to me. Oh, well, that was quick. He doesn't let the grass grow under his feet. He was in so much of a hurry. He's forgotten to put his seal on it. Seal on what? On his commission. It's already come? Exactly what I said. Is that my hat? Yes, and the pick of the collection. Come a little closer. Don't be coy, Johnny, my lad, my blue-eyed boy. <laughs> <laughs> there, madam, you look so sweet. Oh, arrange his collar so that it looks a little more feminine. There, would you believe it? The snotty-nosed brat makes a very pretty girl. I'm consumed with jealousy. If you don't mind, stop being so pretty. Oh, don't be silly, Suzanne. Uh, that sleeve needs to be turned up so the cuff fits snugly. What's this you've got round your arm? <gasps> A ribbon? I'm glad your ladyship's seen it. I told him before I'd tell you. If his lordship hadn't come in, I'd have gotten that ribbon back from him. I'm nearly as strong as he is. What's this on it? Blood? This morning, assuming I was going away, I was fixing my horse's curb when he tossed his head and the boss on the end of the bit caught me on the arm. No one ever used a ribbon to bandage. Especially a stolen ribbon. Anyway, bits and bosses, bibs and bobs, all those horsey words don't mean a thing to me. Oh, his arm's so white. It's like a woman's. Whiter than mine. Look, madame. You'd be more usefully occupied fetching the sticking plaster from my dressing table. The Countess remains as she is for a moment, without speaking, staring at her ribbon. Cherubin devours her with his eyes. This ribbon, sir. It's a shade that suits me particularly, and I was very cross to have lost it. What are you going to use to tie the plaster around his arm with? When you fetch your dress for him, take the ribbon off another hat. The one you took off would have made it better in no time. Why? What's so special about it? This will do more good. When a ribbon has been tied around the hair, has touches of the skin, a person. Or persons unknown, it acquires the healing properties. I never knew that. I'll have to keep the one you had round your arm to test the theory. The next time I, one of the maids cuts herself, I'll try it out. It will stay here with you, but I have to go away. Not for always. I'm so unhappy. No, he's crying. It's all that thoughtless Figaro's fault with his talk of musket shots. <sighs> I long for the moment he predicted. If I knew for sure I was about to die, perhaps my voice would find the courage to- Oh, hush, child, not another word. You're not making any sense. Who can be that knocking on my door like that? Why have you locked this door? Oh, merciful heavens, my husband. And you, with no cloak, collar and bond and arms bare, alone, here with me? Oh, it looks very bad. He'll have got that letter. Oh, he'll be so jealous. Are you going to open this door? Uh, it's, it's just that, uh, I'm alone. Alone? 
Then who's that you're talking to? Uh, you, obviously. After what happened yesterday and again this morning, he'll kill me. He runs into the dressing room and closes the door behind him. The Countess removes the key and hurries to let the Count in. How could I have let this happen? You don't usually lock your door. Um, we, I, uh, was sorting some old clothes, that is. I, I was sorting clothes with Suzanne. She's just gone to her room for a minute. You look and sound flustered. Oh, it's hardly surprising. Uh, not surprising at all. I do assure you that we were talking about you. As I said, I'm alone. Talking about me, were you? I came back because I was worried. I was just getting on my horse when I was given a note. I don't believe a word of it, but it's upset me all the time. What do you mean? What note? I'll say this, madam. You and I are surrounded by some very unsavory people. I've been warned that sometime today, someone I thought was no longer here will attempt to approach you secretly. Well, whoever this bold person is, he'll have to come here, for I am not planning to leave this room all day. Not even for Suzanne's wedding tonight? Not for anything. I am not feeling at all well. It's a good thing the doctor's here. What was that noise? Uh... Someone knocked a chair over, I guess. You must have your mind on something else. Something else? What? There's someone in that room, madam. Yeah. Uh, who do you suppose could be in there? <laughs> That's what I asked you. I only oh. got here a moment ago. Mm, I must be Suzanne, <laughs> probably putting things away. But you said she'd gone to her room. Oh. Uh, her room, that room, I really couldn't say. If it is really Suzanne, why are you looking so perturbed? Perturbed? About my maid? I have no idea if it's about your maid, but perturbed you certainly are. And you, sir, are most certainly perturbed by that girl. You're far more perturbed about her than I am. Well, I'm so perturbed about her, madam, that I insist on seeing her at, at once. I believe that's something you often insist on, but there's absolutely no foundation for your suspicion. Suzanne comes in carrying clothes unseen by others. Then my suspicions will be easily disposed of. Come out, Suzette. I order you to come out of there. But she's practically naked. You don't just come and invade a woman's privacy in her own rooms. She's been trying on some dresses I've given her as a wedding present. She ran away when she heard you arrive. If she's too afraid to show her face, at least she can speak. Answer me, Suzanne. Are you in there? Suzanne, I forbid you to answer. Was there ever such an example of overbearing behavior? Very well. Since she's not answering, I intend to see her, dressed or <gasps> undressed. Anywhere else, I couldn't stop you. But I hope that here, within my own four walls. And I hope to find out in very short order who this mysterious Suzanne is. I can see it's no good asking you for the key, but there's one way sure of breaking down a feeble door like this. Ho, oh, is there anyone there? You surely don't intend to call the servants and turn a suspicion into a public scandal, which would make us the talk of the chateau. You're right, madam. Very well. I'll manage all by myself. I'll go straight to my room and get what I need. But so that everything remains exactly as it is now, I would be obliged if you would come with me without making a noise or causing a fuss, since you don't care much for either. It's a simple enough thing to ask, so I can't think you'll refuse. Uh, who would ever dream of going against your wishes? Oh, I was forgetting the door to your maid's rooms. I must lock that one, too, so that you are exonerated on all accounts. He walks oh. to the back of the stage, locks the door, and removes the key. Oh, Lord, how could I have been so careless as to let this happen? Now that this room is secure, take my arm, would you? And as for Suzanne in the dressing room, I ask her to be so kind as to wait there. When I return, the least that she can expect to happen to her is... Really, this is the most 
odious proceeding. The Count escorts her out and locks the door behind them. Suzanne emerges from the recess, runs to the dressing room, and speaks through the keyhole. Open up, Carabine, open up the door at once. It's Suzanne, open up the door and come out. Oh, Suzette, what an awful scene. I'll be off with you. There's not a moment to lose. How do I get out? I have no idea, but you must go. What if there's no way out? Given what happened to you at your last meeting with him, you'd be massacred, and the mistress and I would be finished. Run and find Figaro and tell him. Perhaps the window overlooking the garden isn't all that high. But we're one floor up. It's not possible. Oh, my poor mistress. And my wedding. Oh, my lord. The melon patch directly underneath, apart from squashing a row or two. Uh... You'll kill yourself. I'd jump into a burning pit, Suzette. I would. I'd throw myself in before I let any harm come to her. But first, a kiss to bring me luck. <gasps> he kisses her, runs to the window, and jumps out. He's far away already. <gasps> the little scamp. As nimble as he's pretty. He'll never be short of women hanging around him. Oh, quickly, take his place. He goes into the dressing room. And now, your lordship, you can smash the door down if that's what amuses you, and you can think again if you imagine that I'm going to say a word. He closes the door behind her. The Count enters, carrying a crowbar, which he tosses onto a chair. Everything is exactly as I left it. Now, madam, before you force me to break that door down, Give a thought to the consequences. I ask you again, will you unlock it? What possible motive could you have for riding roughshod like this over the ties that bind husband and wife? If it were your love for me that was the cause of your rage, then however unreasonably you behaved, I could forgive you. If love were really the reason, I might even forget how offensive I find your way of expressing it. But surely vanity alone cannot be enough to drive a gentleman to such unbecoming conduct. Call it love, call it vanity, but you will open this door or else I'll... Stop, sir. I beg you. Do you think me so lacking in principles? Whatever you say, madam. But I intend to see who is in your dressing room. Very well, sir. You shall see. Listen to me. Calmly. So it's not Suzanne? Nor is it a person from whom you have anything to fear. We were planning a practical joke for this evening. All very innocent, I assure you. And I swear, oh, I swear. What do you swear? Oh, that neither of us had any intention whatsoever of upsetting you. Neither of us? Is this person a man? Uh, boy. What boy? Oh, I, I hardly dare say his name. I'll kill him. Oh, merciful heavens. Tell me. It's the young... Oh, Carabine. Carabine, the insolent puppy. This confirms my suspicions and explains the note. Oh, you mustn't think. No, just... Oh. Wherever I look, I find that damn page. Come, madam, open the door. It's all clear to me now. You wouldn't have been so upset when you said goodbye to him this morning. He'd have gone when I told him to. You wouldn't have concocted that cock and bull story about Suzanne. And he wouldn't have taken such good care to stay hidden if there wasn't something underhand going on. He was afraid he'd make you angry if he showed himself. Will you come out, you wretched boy? Oh, sir, you are so angry. I fear for his life. I beg you, do not be misled by unfounded suspicions or the fact that he's half undressed. Undressed? Well, regrettably, yes. He was getting ready be, to be disguised as a woman. A wig of mine on his head, just his shirt, no coat, collar open, bare arms. He was about to try on And my you were dress. intending to stay in your room as befits a good yeah. wife? Oh, um, you shall stay in your room. A good long stay. But first, I must make sure he's kicked out so I don't keep coming across him anymore. My lord, spare him. He's only a boy. I should never forgive myself for being the cause of Your his... fear increases his guilt. Oh, he's not guilty. He was leaving. It was I who had him called back. Stand up. Get out of my way. How dare you presume to plead for another man? Very well. I shall get out of your way. I shall stand up. I will even give you the key to my dressing room. 
But for the sake of your love... My love for a faithless wife? Promise me you'll let the boy go without harming him. And then you may take your anger out on me if I can't convince you. I will not listen to another word. Oh my God, he'll be killed. It's Suzanne. I'll kill him, I'll kill him. Go on then, kill the dratted page. This is a disaster. And I suppose you're play acting too, pretending to be amazed. But perhaps she wasn't in there by herself. He enters the dressing room. Don't take on so, madam. He's miles away. He jumped for it. Then I think I'm going to die. The Count emerges looking embarrassed and pauses briefly. There's no one there. As it turns out, I was wrong, madam. You are a most talented actress. And I suppose I'm not, sir. So, madam, it was all just a joke. And why not, sir? It was an abominable taste. May I ask you why you did it? Does your outrageous behavior deserve to be treated otherwise? What you call outrageous behavior is a matter of honor. Did I marry you so that I could be the eternal victim of your neglect and jealousy, which only you would dare try to justify? Oh, madam, it was never deliberate. Her ladyship could easily have let you go ahead and call your servants. You're right, and I am the one who should apologize. I'm sorry. I feel very ashamed of myself. Why not admit, sir, that you deserve to be? Why didn't you come out when I called, you wicked girl? I was trying to get dressed as best I could. I had pins sticking in me everywhere. Madam was telling me not to, and I assumed she had reasons for doing so. Instead of put things right with her. No, sir. The affront is too grave to be forgiven. I shall withdraw to a convent. I see it's high time I went. Could you go with no regrets? I'm quite sure there'd be tears ever after. And what if there were, Suzette? I'd prefer regret to the thought that I'd stoop so low as to forgive him. He has wounded me too deeply for that. Rosine. I have ceased to be the Rosine you once pursued so passionately. I am poor Countess Almaviva, the sad, deserted wife you do not love anymore. Oh, your ladyship. For pity's sake. Pity? You showed me no pity. But, but there was the note. It made my blood boil. I never agreed it should be written. You knew about it? It was that harebrained Figaro. He had a hand in this. Who gave it to Basile? Who told me he got it from some yokel. Oh, I'll make him change his double-dealing tune. Of all the two-faced, I'll see he pays for the whole lot of them. You want to be forgiven yourself, but won't forgive others, just like a man. If I ever felt I could forgive you because you were misled by the note, I'd insist that everyone involved was forgiven too. And so they shall, with all my heart, Countess Tone for making such a shameful mistake. Oh, we should both be ashamed. No, no. Say it was all my fault. It's still beyond me how quick women are to adopt exactly the right gestures and tone of voice to suit the situation. You blushed. You wept. Your face was tragic. Upon my word, it still is. I blushed because I resented your insinuations. But does a man have the sensitivity to distinguish the honest indignation of a woman wronged? from the agitation of those who are justly accused. And the page have dressed in a shirt, more or less naked. Oh, here he is, before your very eyes. Aren't you glad it was this one, not the other? You don't... <laughs> and all that pleading and pretending to cry. <laughs> You're making me laugh, but I really don't feel like laughing. Oh, we met think we're rather good at politics, but really we're only children who play at it. You're the one, madam, the king should send as his ambassador to London. Have all women put themselves to an advanced course of self-control to be as good at it as you are? 
Men leave us no alternative. If you'd only treat women like prisoners on parole, you'd soon see what we can be left to do the decent thing. Let's leave matters there, Count. Perhaps I did go too far. But since I have been so understanding, despite the gravity of the provocation, then surely you will respond in kind. But I want to hear you say once more that you forgive me. <laughs> did I say I forgave him, Suzanne? I didn't hear you, madam. All right, but won't you say it now? Do you think you deserve it, unfeeling ma'am? Yes, because I'm genuinely sorry. Suspecting that there was a man in Madam's dressing room. He has punished me harshly. Refusing to take her word when she said it was her maid. Rosine, are you really immovable? Oh, Suzette, I'm so weak. What an example I am to you. After this, no one will ever believe in a woman's fury again. Can't be helped, madam. With men, doesn't it always come down to this in the end? They said her ladyship wasn't well. I came at the double. I'm delighted to see there's nothing wrong. You seem very attentive. All part of the service. But since everything seems as it should be, my lord, and all the young men and women of the estate have assembled downstairs with fiddles and pipes, ready to accompany me whenever you give the word, and I lead my bride. I'll we'll stay here and keep an eye on her ladyship at the castle. Keep an eye? But <laughs> she's not ill. No, but what about this man who isn't here but will try to approach her? What man is that who isn't here? The one in the note you gave to Basile. Who said I did? I hadn't already been reliably informed that you did, wretch. The guilt written all over your face would prove that you are lying. If that's so, it's not me but lying but my face. Poor Figaro, the game's up. Don't waste your breath trying to come up with complicated excuses. We've told him everything. Told him what? You're not talking to Basile, you know. That you wrote the, the note this morning so that when his lordship came, he would think that the page was in the dressing room where I was with the door locked. Well, what have you got to say to that? It's no good trying to hide anything, Figaro. The charade is over. The charade is over? Over. Finished. Now, what do you say? I say that I wished as much could be said about my wedding. So, if you'll give the order... So you admit knowing all about the letter? Since her ladyship says I do, Suzanne says I do, and you yourself say I do, then I'd better say I do too. Though if I were you, I honestly wouldn't believe a word of what we're saying. You've got no leg to stand on, and still you go on lying. I tell you, I'm beginning to lose my temper. <laughs> oh, poor Figaro. Do you really expect him to tell the truth for once in his life? I warned him of the danger. I honestly couldn't have done more. Did you see the page? Still a bit shaken. Poor boy. Come, sir. They can't wait to be married. It's only natural they should be impatient. Let us go down for the ceremony. Here's Marceline. Why isn't she here? I should like to be dressed for the occasion, at least. For the servants? I won't be. Antonio is half drunk carrying a pot of wallflowers. Uh, sir, your lordship. Get some proper. What do you want, Antonio? Oh, get some proper bars put on the windows once and for all. For my, the ones my flower beds are under. All sorts of things get thrown out them windows. Somebody just throwed a man out. Out of this window? On your toes, Figaro, stay awake. He's always drunk before breakfast, sir. Oh, no, no, no. Just a, a little hungover from last night. Oh, that's all. Jumping to conclusions like that is unethicalicious. What about the man? Where is he now? Where is he at? Yes. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. He's got to be found. I'm your gardener. There's only me that looks after your garden. So if a man falls into it, you can see... It's my good name what gets trampled on, not just my flowers. Get him off the subject. Still on the bottle, then. If I didn't take a drink, I'd go mad. Drinking like this when there's no need. Drinking when we're not thirsty and making love all year round, ladyship. Them's the only thing that separates us from the beasts of the field. Answer the question or I'll send you packing. 
Well, maybe I wouldn't go. What do you mean? If you've got enough upstairs to keep hold of a good gardener, I ain't so daft as to let go of a good employer such as yourself. You said somebody threw a man out of that window. Yes, Excellency. Just now, he had a white shirt on, ran away by Jingo, went off like a scared rabbit. And then? I would have gone after him, but, but I fetched up against the gate and gave myself such a knock on the hand that I still can't move head nor tail of this finger. But at least you'd recognize this man. I would indeed. If only I'd got a proper look at him. Oh, he didn't see who it was. You're making a great fuss over a flower pot. How many flower pots make one fuss pot, whinging about wallflowers? There is no need to look any further, my lord. It was me who jumped. What? It was you? Oh, I reckon it was rather, how shall I say, more like that skinny page. You mean Caribbean? Yes. Yes. yes, with his horse, too, rushed back for that very purpose from the gates of Seville, which is where he probably is now. No, I never said that. Never. I didn't see no horse jump. I'd have said so. Oh, give me patience. I was in the maid's room in a white shirt. It was so hot. I was waiting there for Suzanne when suddenly I heard his lordship's voice in this great hollow baloo. I don't know why, but I panicked because of the, the note. And I must say, I behaved very foolishly without thinking... I jumped into the flower bed and landed awkwardly on my right foot. Ah. Since it was you, I'd better give you back this scrap of paper that fell out of your shirt while you were falling. Give that. I can't imagine you were so frightened that you've forgotten what's written on this paper or how it came to be in your pocket. Absolutely but not. The fact is, I've got lots of bits of paper, and they're all to be dealt with. What's this one? Oh, a letter from Marceline. Four pages of it. Wonderful stuff. Wouldn't be the appeal sent by that wretched poacher who's in jail. No, no, I've got that here. Uh, I did have an inventory of the furniture in the dower house in my other pocket. Oh, Lord Suzanne, it's Carabine's commission. It's hopeless. It's Carabine's commission. Well... You're a man who's never at a loss for words. Can't you guess? His lordship says, can't you guess? Go, you disgusting oaf. You have to stand so close when you're talking to me. So you can't remember what it is. Got it. How stupid can I get? It'll be the poor lad's commission. He gave it to me and I forgot to return it. I'm such a fool. What'll he do without his commission? I'd better hurry. Get Why would he him. give it to you? He, uh, mm, he wanted me to do something with it. Well, everything's as it should be. Yo, the seal's missing. You're not answering. Actually, there is one small thing missing. He said it was you... Usual. usual? Usual? What's usual? To add the seal with your coat of arms. Probably you didn't think it worth the bother. So it seems that fate has decided that I shall never get to the bottom of all of this. Figaro's the ringleader, and it looks as if I'll never get my revenge. You're not going without giving word for my wedding to proceed. Enter Basile, Bartolo, Marceline, Grip Soleil, plus servants and tenants of the Count. Do not give the word, my lord. Before you grant his request, you owe us justice. He has obligations to me. Vengeance has come in person. Obligations? What kind of obligations? Explain yourself. Oh, I shall explain myself, you philanderer. What's this all about, Marceline? A promise of marriage. A receipt I signed for some money she lent me. That's all. A loan made on condition that he would marry me. You are a great lord and chief justice of the province. Present yourself before the court, and I shall do justice to all parties. Uh, uh, in that case, Your Excellency, would Your Excellency also allow me to set out the claim I have with respect to Marceline? Ha, ah, it's the villain who gave me the note. Another lunatic from the same stable. 
claim claim <laughs> you've got an infernal cheek standing there talking to me of claims you great booby my god got him to a t straight off booby is right marceline none of the planned arrangements will go ahead until we have looked into your claims this will be done in open court which will sit in the great council chamber honest Basile, trusted and dependable bearer of messages you will go into town and notify the members of the bench you have a case and you will also bring back the yokel who gave you the note how would i know him again are you refusing i am not here to act as the castle messenger boy why are you here as a distinguished village organist I teach the harpsichord to her ladyship, singing to her maids, and the mandolin to the pages. But my principal function is to entertain your lordship's guests with my guitar, a, a function that will please you to commend. I'll go if you'd like, your honorship. What's your name, and what do you do? Grip Soleil, your lordness, that looks after the goats. I was ordered along to help with the fiery works, so I gave the goats the day off. I knows where all them their fancy lawyers' houses are. You're keen. I like that. You can go. But you will escort this fine, upstanding man and play your guitar and sing to entertain him on the way. He's a guest. Me? A guest? I am to escort a goat herd and play my... That's what you're paid for. Now go, or I'll have you shown the door permanently. No use me trying to fight him. An iron fist in the bush is worth- A dozen old birds like you. I'll do nothing to help your wedding along. Instead, I'll make damn sure I marry Marceline. Take it from me, don't settle anything before I get back. Don't settle anything? Don't you worry, I won't, even if you never come back. You don't look as if you feel much like singing. Do you want me to start you off? Come on, look cheerful, chin up, and music, maestro. Song for the girl I shall marry. I'd swap all of your money for the sweetness of honey that is my Suzanne. She's so gentle and kind, I surrender my mind to my Suzanne. Suzanne. Girl, let me in, for with the note of his. Oh, madam, when I came out of the dressing room, you should have seen your face. It went all white, but just like a cloud passing over it, it gradually turned red, red as a beetroot all over. So he jumped out of the window. Without batting an eye, such an attractive boy, and light as a butterfly. Oh, that, that, that horrible gardener. Oh, I was so shaken. I couldn't put two ideas together. But it was the very opposite, madam. It made me realize what an advantage moving in high society gives a lady. It teaches her to lie convincingly. Do you think the Count was taken in? And what if he finds Caravan here in the chateau? I'll go make sure that he's hidden so well that... Oh no, he must go away. After what's happened, you'll appreciate that I'm not happy about sending him to the garden instead of you. You can take it as read that I'm not going either. So once again, my wedding. Wait a minute. Instead of sending him or you, what if I went myself? You, madam. That way, no one would be running any risk. The Count couldn't deny the facts. And when I'd punished him for being jealous and proved he'd been unfaithful, it would be... <laughs> Look, we've come through one crisis. I'm tempted to try again. Send word to him at once that you'll meet him in the garden. But don't let anyone else. I'm not even fear of. Try to meddle. Fetch my velvet mask and my cane. I'll be on the terrace mulling it all over. This little scheme of mine is really quite bold. Oh. The ribbon, my pretty ribbon. I'd almost forgotten all about you. From now on, you'll stay with me. 
You remind me of the moment when that unfortunate boy... Oh, Count Almaviva, what have you done? And what do I think I'm doing now? Here are your cane and mask. Remember, I've told you you're not to say a word about this to Figaro. Your ladyship, your plan is wonderful. I've just been thinking about it. It makes everything come together, brings it all to a conclusion, and doesn't leave any loose ends. And whatever happens, I'm certain now that I shall be married after all. Thank <laughs> you.